Yo, it's your boy GT here from the Gangster Times. Please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Also hit me up on Instagram, which is gangstertimes underscore official. And on my Snapchat, type in the search box, Gangster Times. So guys, this next news story is coming from Bristol. And I remember last summer, it was one of you guys that come through my DMs and let me know about this story. And it seems as though it's come to a conclusion. So three people have been convicted of murdering a 29-year-old father of six in Bristol last year with the fourth person previously admitting a charge of murder. Andre Gale was stabbed nine times during the attack in an alleyway close to Eastern Community Centre in the early hours of Monday the 31st of August last year. He died at the Bristol Royal Infirmary two days later. Rico Corbin and Tyan Finlayson, who are both 28 of Speedwell, and Jerome Lewis, who's 25 from London, and a 17-year-old boy, will be sentenced on the 5th of July. A fifth man who was age 40 was found not guilty of murder. So Andy Veitlingham, who's the QC prosecuting, told the jury it was a bank holiday weekend. On the evening of the 30th, there was an outdoor party by the community centre in Easton. Food stalls were set up, music was playing, and several hundred people were there having a good time. CCTV cameras were recording in the area. A little after 3am, they showed Andre Gale being chased by a party. A little after 3 a.m. they showed Andre Gale being chased through the party by a group of other men. He looks to have been pretty quick on his feet, but with the crowd of people that was there and the difficulty in moving through a crowd, he had little chance of escaping. Some of the men chasing him had knives, and once they caught up with him, he was stabbed nine times. One of the wounds penetrated the left side of his chest and his lung. He was taken straight to the Bristol Royal Infirmary operated on and cared for in the intensive care department, but the doctors were unable to save his life. I just want to say rest in peace, Andre, and my condolences go out to your family. The court heard police were on the scene soon after the stabbing. They began work to identify who the men were who chased Mr Gale up the alleyway. It was a prosecution's case that those men were the first three defendants, the youth, Rico Corbin and Tyan Finlayson, and another man called Jerome Lewis. While Lewis pleaded guilty to murder, the prosecution's case was that the youth Corbin and Finlayson were involved in a joint enterprise in which Mr Gale was murdered. The prosecutor said Corbin and the youth were right behind Lewis in the chase. Both had knives drawn. Each of them encouraged the attack through their presence and were also right there immediately after the attack on Gale began. Corbin stabbed another man perhaps because he thought he was Gale, who had gone to ground but he is not charged with a separate offence in relation to that. So far as Finlayson is concerned, the CCTV showed that he played no part in the physical attack on Gale, but he was part of the group looking for Gale and then chased him from the car park up the alley. The prosecution's case is that a part of that group and by his presence with it, he encouraged the fatal attack. So guys, check that out. Even though it's been stated that Finlayson took no part in the physical attack, but because he was chasing him in the car park up an alley, he's involved by default. The prosecution said a person doesn't have to actually say anything for you to find that they were encouraging another or other people. Of course, a person can encourage someone by shouting words of encouragement, but they can just as much encourage someone by adding to the force of numbers. Finlayson, we say, falls into that category. It was alleged Daniel Atkinson, who was cleared a murder, drove Lewis and Corbin to the youth's house to pick him up a little after 2am. The prosecutor said just a few minutes before the stabbing of Andre Gale, he drove Lewis, Corbin and the youth to the scene and dropped them off nearby. He waited in his car while the stabbing took place. The first call that Lewis made after stabbing Andre Graves to Atkinson just a couple of minutes afterwards. Very shortly after that, Atkinson drove Corbin and the youth away from the scene. And less than 24 hours later, he drove Jerome Lewis from Bristol to London. So Detective Inspector Roger Doxey of the Major Crime Investigation Team said, Andre Gale died in a senseless knife attack, which was carried out in front of a large crowd who were gathered for a silent disco in the early hours of the late August bank holiday Monday. While the motive for this pre-planned attack on Andre has never been fully understood, the CCTV evidence is clear and unmistakable. It has shown the investigation team and indeed the jury this was a savage, vicious and unrestrained attack 
on an unarmed man by a group of cowardly individuals who acted together and who were prepared to use knives to achieve their objective. They showed total disregard to other members of the public who were in the immediate vicinity which included another innocent man who was repeatedly stabbed in the case of mistaken identity but thankfully survived his injuries. They said the extensive investigation included 14 arrests, 583 statements taken and 2,047 exhibits seized. CCTV was seized from 61 private premises and 31 local authority cameras which totaled more than 1,300 hours of footage. Owing to a comprehensive review of the evidence gathered during the course of our investigation, they said we determined that Jerome Lewis and Rico Corbin carried out the fatal attack on Andre, assisted and encouraged this horrific act by those who had been jointly convicted of murder following the trial at Bristol Crown Court. He said the specialist family liaison officer has been supporting Andre's devastated family and loved ones throughout and would like to pay tribute to the courage and dignity they've shown despite having to deal with this tragedy. We'd also like to thank all the witnesses who came forward, especially those who gave evidence during the trial. A statement from Andre's mother read, My family is grief-stricken and struggling to come to terms with not only losing my son but also the brutality and senseless evil in the way they attacked and killed him. These men are fearless, remorseless and have shown total disregard for people in the community of Bristol and caused innocent bystanders to flee in terror at what was unfolding in front of them. During the trial, we have had to watch CCTV footage of Andre's last moments alive, which have been harrowing. The pain is immeasurable. It's still hard to accept that he's gone and I personally don't think I will ever be able to accept this loss. Too many parents are losing and have lost their sons and families to this epidemic of knife crime. And I want my grandchildren, Andre's children, to be safe and have a future without these murderers walking amongst us. We have now come together as a family to love, guide and support Andre's children, whose young lives have dramatically changed. We need time as a family to grieve properly and try and heal. I would like to thank everyone who has given and shown so much support. I couldn't have got through this without them. And a statement from Andre's father read, Seeing my son lying in the hospital bed, completely motionless, being kept alive by machines, my boy, who had so much energy and spirits, his life taken away from us. No parent should ever have to bury their son. My son, who is also a father, will never see his children grow up. Not only have I lost a son, his children have also lost a father. Andre's siblings, who too are devastated by his death, will never be able to have a relationship with him. So many lives are destroyed by the hands of these vicious murderers. Taking these murderers off the streets will not bring back my son, but it will prevent the suffering of another family and allow our kids to grow old and die naturally. So really sad news there coming out of Bristol. Once again, I just want to say rest in peace, Andre Gale, and my condolences go out to your family. But Andre Gale's mother described this knife crime epidemic. This is what it does when you stab people. You don't think of the consequences. You not only can take a life, you can ruin families, and you can ruin your own life if you take a knife out and stab someone. It's really not worth it. Just stay safe out there, guys. It's your boy, GT. Keep it locked. Keep it real.